Alright guys, well, it is a, uh, <laughs> it is a cool gray spring day here in Hotlanta, GA, my hometown of Hotlanta, GA on this, it is a Friday, somewhere around April 26, 2024, although I have lost all track and I have to go meet a old high school friend of mine. I have not seen this man. <coughs> we were thinking it's been 42 years. So I'm sure I get to go look at all the pictures of his children and grandchildren. So uh, I got to run off and meet my buddy for lunch. I don't think I will mention being a doomer to him. I'll have to get a new shirt. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of my mouth when he asks me what I'm up to in my life. But what I'm up to right now, since it is a Friday, and I've got a few minutes here, it is time for our weekly Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup Rant, where we simply go on the pages of the mainstream media and Medium.com to look at all of the hopium being uh, thrown around, and <laughs> I cannot believe it. Uh, Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles and Elliot Jacobson have made Bloomberg Bloomberg news uh, yesterday. I do not believe it. We are right here on Bloomberg. <coughs> news apparently I have rankled some feathers of some clueless moron uh, named Mark Gongloff, the Bloomberg opin opinion editor and columnist covering climate change. I guess Sam Mitchell and Elliot Jacobson have ruffled the panties of this breeder and he is striking back Having kids in this day and age does not make you a moron. Yes. <laughs> so uh, anyway, of course, he is he is one of these. He is a buddy of Zeke Housefather talking about uh, we are going to save the planet by decarbonizing the global industrial economy, and this is one of those ain't gonna happens where even if it does happen, which it ain't gonna happen, but, 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 but if, even if we do decarbonize the economy, it is not uh, in any way, shape, or form <coughs> going to save the planet <coughs> from climate change or anything else, and it very well could uh, actually make the situation worse. The problem is not the carbon in the economy. The problem is the economy. Well, the problem is humans and people who make more of them, such as, uh, what was this guy's name? Mark Gongloff and Zeke Housefather. Anyway, decarbonizing the economy to save the planet. This next one by this fellow Eric Lee, I will try to maybe make my Sunday sermon if I have time. Excellent article called Doctor's Diagnosis for the Earth, a Terminal Human Malignancy, and this is his review of this book by a fellow named um, Warren M. Hearn, H-E-R-N, uh, his book from 2022, Homo Ecophagus, Homo Ecophagus, and one of the quotes is, modern humanity is a cancer, and that is neither hyperbole, metaphor, nor analogy. We, we are literally a cancer uh, on the uh, on the earth. So uh, again, I'm gonna. This is an excellent. This is from Medium.com, and he just uh, <clears throat> summarizes. He summarizes the book and offers a lot of uh, 
a lot of good quotes. As I say, I will get back to this, but uh, see, he is an 84-year-old physician and professor of anthropology, University of Colorado in Boulder, and uh, so he, <clears throat> you know, the first 90% of it is him talking about how humans are the problem. Uh, th th there, there you go. And uh, then, of course, towards the end, we get the, uh, the hopium springing eternal. So after spending, I don't know, maybe two or three hundred pages talking about the problem on this planet is humans. Uh, then, then, of course, Eric comes up uh, quoting Dr. Hearn, quote, We have choices to make. We, you know, unlike cancer cells, humans can choose to change what we are doing and not be a cancer on the planet. Stop changing the biosphere irreversibly. But the longer we wait, the harder that choice is to make. And Eric's response to that quote is, I have been hearing the same calls to action since the first Earth Day in 1970. Meanwhile, the pace of planetary destruction, excuse me while I facepalm. <laughs> but anyway, we will get back to this excellent essay, Doctor's Diagnosis for the Earth, a Terminal Human Malignancy. Hopefully, maybe on Sunday. Uh, okay, I misread this. You know, it's too bad that the word plant means both, you know, like, vege like vegetation or like a factory. So sometimes when you read headlines, I read the he headline, Can this ocean-based carbon plant help save the world? Some scientists are raising red flags. I, I thought they were talking about seaweed, but I guess this ain't going to happen, which they, they admit it, it, it ain't going to happen. This is from CNN <coughs> talking about uh, a startup <coughs> building a plant to turn carbon dioxide <coughs> from air and seawater into the same material as, sea sh as seashells in a process that will produce green hydrogen, a much-hyped clean fuel. Yes, the idea is that the plant will pull water from the ocean, zap it with an electric current, and run air through it to produce a series of chemical reactions to trap and store carbon dioxide as minerals which can be put back in the sea or used on land, you know, to save the planet. This green hydrogen ain't gonna happen, but at least CNN even is blowing the whistle on this talking about how uh, green hydrogen ain't going to happen. And right next to that one, uh, and I don't even know, this might even be this, an article about the same thing. What is rock flower, F-L-O-U-R? What is rock flower, and how can it help to fight climate change? Okay, rock flower. Basically, pulverizing rock, uh, I guess, to say we're, we're going to pulverize the planet to save the planet. Pulverize the planet to save the planet. What rock flower is, since they're asking the question, I'm going to answer the question, but what rock flower is, it, it, it is one more of this never-ending, uh, desperate, uh, grabs, grabs its straws 
grasping at straws to save the planet by pulverizing the planet. It is a techno-utopian wet dream uh, that's not going to do a goddamn thing to fight climate change. It's just going to put uh, more money in the hands of a rock crusher to save the planet. You do not pulverizing the planet to save the planet ain't gonna happen. I'm not saying that they're not going to pulverize the, start pulverizing the planet to save the planet. That could happen. What's not gonna happen is pulverizing the planet into rock flour is not going to do a goddamn thing to fight climate change or save the planet. Alright. We have another list of 10 things. 10, this is 10 small things that you, you can do today to make a big difference. A big difference in saving the planet. And uh, I, I guess keeping your pecker in your pants and not letting your knickers down are, are not small things. Well. I guess they're smaller for some people than others, but anyway. So anyway, if, so while uh, you're you're figuring out how to keep your pecker in your pants and your knickers up, here's what you can do in the meantime to save the planet. And apparently, this with no trace of irony, this is from the Akron, Ohio, Beacon Journal newspaper, without a trace of irony. Use bottled water as a last resort. Instead, opt for reusable, refillable sports bottles. Right next to that, use refillable containers, you know, for all of your household cleaner chemicals. You can refill, the, don't use a new bottle of chemicals to save the planet. You know, just get a big jug of chemicals. Alright, and I am going to do this. I've never heard of these things, and I really am going to do this one. Uh, use paper laundry sheets to cut down on... I've never heard of these things. Paper laundry sheets to cut down on plastic containers. <laughs> uh, I really am doing that one. Uh, how about donate reusable items to thrift stores? There you go. Yes, take advantage of federal tax credits to save the planet. Plant only native plants. Flush only toilet paper. Flush only toilet paper to save the planet. Rather than purchase a one-time use item, see if you can borrow it. Get involved in local cleanup or tree planting efforts. And if you are reading this in the print edition, please be sure to recycle this newspaper. There you are. Uh, <laughs> so, <coughs> occasionally, you know, we... Uh, we do see some honest reporting. This is coming out of Truth Dig uh, from this fellow. Uh, I've read his stuff before. Christopher Ketchum. I like this guy. And Christopher Ketchum has gone off on, a, on an absolute rant uh, on hydropower, which uh, of all of the bright green lies uh, this unadulterated horseshit uh, uh, about <coughs> hydropower uh, being clean, green, sustainable energy. There is nothing clean. There is nothing green. There is nothing sustainable about hydropower. It is one of the biggest bright green lies. Uh, damn the planet to save the planet. Uh, it, it, it just absolutely infuriating 
uh, how uh, how the mainstream media, uh, these clueless moron little limp dick lefty greenies, the United Nations. But so uh, Christopher is uh, spelling it all out in his uh, book link article, the whole damn truth. Hydropower projects are far from climate neutral and the downstream threats to indigenous people, biodiversity, and marine ecosystems are significant and growing. And he breaks, he's looking at this thing um, between Canada and New York, just one, <coughs> he's just digging deep into one uh, of these hydropower schemes. Uh, so he, he, he I, I just can't resist getting, uh, cutting down to the bottom after, uh, you, you know, talking about uh, how hydropower uh, is not only not going to save the planet by flooding, by damming and flooding the planet, it's just going to ramp up the destruction of the, uh, of the planet. So uh, we get down to the bottom talking about some guy named Benefield. Benefield thinks it is time industrial societies reconsider their assumptions about taking from the wild hinterlands to serve the hubs of civilization. Those who live under the shadow of the dams and in the destruction zone of the reservoirs wonder why they must sacrifice so that people in cities like New York can benefit. They wonder why the people in New York don't make sacrifices. This is a sentiment I have heard repeatedly when interviewing land and water defenders, <clears throat> especially noble savages who suggest that affluent urbanites at the apex of the technological mega machine may need in the face of our ecological crisis to tighten their belts, contract their power usage, <clears throat> reduce their material footprint, and start putting into effect some measure of austerity. Yes. I put this idea to Hydro-Quebec Energy Booster Michael Gerard, uh, I guess at Columbia University that he interviewed earlier in the story, and this was Michael Gerard's response to that ain't going to happen. Quote, I understand that sentiment, but there is no imaginable pathway for a densely populated metropolitan area like New York, they're talking about New York City, to begin to begin practicing this kind of austerity. Close quote. Gerard might as well be saying that the energy privileges of New York of New Yorkers are non-negotiable. The pressing issue with planetary warming on a catastrophic trajectory is that these privileges need to be greened. Quote, environmentalists glom on this green energy idea as, as though we in the Western world can continue living high on the hog, Benefit told me. All we have to do is switch the type of power we use. Those are false solutions. We don't consider the fact that we absolutely cannot continue to live this way. We have to scale down, meaning scale down voluntarily, which is another way of saying ain't going to happen. I need, I don't know if there's any life in this battery. Okay, the battery is still happening. So I, I'm just rolling down the list. Uh, okay. How about floating tidal T 
T-I-D-A-L, floating tidal energy turbine company to make waves in U.S. waters. Yep, the floating tidal energy turbines. Saving the planet ain't going to happen. Here is scientists achieve world first technological breakthrough in quest to extract solar power from space, harnessing the power of space to benefit life on Earth. Yes, okay. A couple of plastics articles. The U.S. is under pressure to lead the way in reducing plastic pollution. But it keeps making more of it. Do you think so? The U.S. leading the way. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, uh, they're having this big plastics bullshit, plastics uh, talks up there in Canada this week. This is Fortune magazine weighing in on this. <clears throat> After overshadowing the climate talks, the myth of circularity looms over the UN Plastics Treaty. The myth of circularity, and and, and good for uh, uh, and, and good for Fortune magazine calling out this bullshit, don't have time to go into this, and talking about the myth of the circular economy, the, 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 these people talking how, how we can put uh, the global industrial economy, you, you, you know, where it's, it, there, there's no inputs and outputs, basically. It's just one big... Uh, it, 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 it's a joke. It ain't gonna happen. It is a myth. The myth of circularity. Thank you, Fortune Magazine. Uh, disabusing anybody with a brain of that myth. All right. The first big rig hydrogen fuel station in the U.S. opens in California. Yes, we're going to let all those millions of big rigs switch from uh, diesel to clean green hydrogen to move all of this planet-eating stuff around. Uh, I mean, you should have seen the 300-mile the, 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 the an uh, endless chain of, of diesel-powered 18-wheelers uh, that I've been seeing uh, going up and down I-75 the past couple of days. Good God almighty, uh, the, these uh, goddamn 18-wheelers. So all we have to do to save the planet is, is keep loading millions and millions and millions of uh, 18 wheeler big rigs full of all of this planet eating shit and in, in, instead of pumping diesel into them we will just use clean green hydrogen to move the, this hundred trillion tons of shit around this planet to Walmart and, uh, uh, and, and, and that's how we're going to save the planet. All right. Researchers develop sand-based technology to save major issue with clean energy. Yes, we are going to uh, save the planet with sand. All right. Many articles on... Uh, on the widest ever global coral bleaching is underway and there is only one way there is only one way to save the coral reefs. So this is a long involved article uh, in medium.com uh, 
and we finally get to the bottom. <clears throat> Marine ecologist and conservation biologist Julia Baum put it bluntly, quote, the only real solution <coughs> for coral reefs now is a rapid phase-out of fossil fuels. Close quote. Yes, the energy transition is our best chance of saving coral reefs. Yes, and as earthlings, messengers, and part of the collective effort for a better, sustainable future, we need to start being honest brokers about this fact. Yes, because this is not just about the corals. It is about us, our future, and the future of our planet. Let's be clear and assertive about this. Once coral has died, marine creatures that navigate using coral noise or struggle to find their way home, will we heed the SOS call corals are sending worldwide and find? A sustainable path forward? Be loud! Yes. And more and more uh, stories. Uh, controversial methods to cool the earth by reflecting sunlight gain traction as global temperatures rise. More and more cheerleading in the mainstream media, basically about uh, chemtrails, but we're going to close. I think uh, I, I, I think that uh, what's that guy's name? Don Quixote and his sidekick Sancho Panza. Well, not not Sancho, but but Don Quixote. Uh, I'm sure Miguel Cervantes would would have gotten a sick chuckle out of this. The power of cork, I mean, I mean cork, you, you, you know, cork trees. The power of cork is the key to the climate change fight. Scientists say the power of cork is going to save the planet. <laughs> anyway, guys, I have to, uh, I really do have to wrap this up and go meet my, uh, go meet my buddy and catch up to, to uh, hear about all of his children and grandchildren. Ah, uh, boy. <laughs> Get out there and laugh while you still can. Bye, guys. All right, little dog, we got to head out. <laughs>